Well, it's really very big, but actually it's very small. This is a model of the giant P&H 4100 XPC electric mining shovel, but actually the model is very small because it's in 1 to 160 scale, and that's N scale for people with model railways. The model comes in a P&H branded box, and Vice Brothers are shown as the maker. We will start off with the documentation, and that includes a reprint of a P&H marketing brochure for the 4100 XPC. And this is always a nice thing to have with a model because it explains something about the real machine. Also included is a one page leaflet, and that explains how to get the delicate model out of the box. And on the back it describes the assembly that's required by fixing handrails. But in fact that's unnecessary because the model already has the handrails fixed. Sadly there is the collector's worst enemy which is a twist tie and that's used to secure the model to the tray. And after that we can very carefully lift the model out. As you can imagine this is a precision model in a very small scale. So you have to be both respectful and careful in how you handle the model. The protection in the box is good and the model has arrived undamaged. But for sure you have to be careful how you remove the twist tie away from the model. Definitely don't yank or pull the tie as if you're trying to pull a donkey where it doesn't want to go. So be patient, be careful and just promise your XPC that you won't hurt it. The tracks on the model are nicely shrink wrapped so you have to carefully remove that. And again don't tug on it like you're trying to pull out a rotten tooth. One of the interesting things is that when you look at the tray it's actually marked with a TWH model number, so it looks like it's been stuck many years awaiting release. Just to confirm, there's no assembly to do because this model is complete out of the box. The track frames are really nice with plenty of details, although there are no working rollers, which is not a surprise given the scale. The metal tracks are nice and there are large drive motors at the drive sprockets. And there's a cable reel for the incoming supply to the machine. Even at this size the graphics are very sharp and there are some really tiny warning signs too. Moving around to the back of the machine and there's an impressive counterweight and P&H is nicely embossed in the casting. Moving up on top and there are plenty of floodlights around the model and what's really impressive are the metal handrails and mesh floors. Another really nice detail are the silvered mirrors and they're clear enough to properly show reflections. The quality of things like the steps is really high, and they are really nice considering the tiny size. There are plenty of other details highlighted, and that includes handles for the doors, and the cab looks great too, although on the review model the roof wasn't quite on straight. But that's easy to fix by levering it off, and that also gives us the chance to see something that you wouldn't otherwise see, and that's the detail inside, including another seat and a desk and cabinets. Up on top, the main support cables for the boom look very good. And looking at the boom, the detailing is of a very high standard. At the top of the boom, there are nice large spoked wheels. And the bucket is excellent with many fine details and finely detailed teeth. Out we go into the Cranes Etc mine to test out the crawler tracks, and even on a smooth surface they make a good effort at rolling. And as you can see, even though they're small, they move very easily. Equally smooth is the rotation of the machine, and it all has the feel of being a precision model. Even in this very small scale there's also a descending staircase, and it's modelled well because it lowers fully to ground level. To raise or lower the dipper you insert a key, and the modelling is clever because you insert the key into a window in a doorway. The winch works well because it seems to have a positive brake action. And if you want to use the crowd action, you can move it by hand. Of course you've got to be able to empty your big bucket, and the flap can be open and closed. It's not free swinging, but it does mean the bucket is able to stay in a closed position. Let's also test out the ability to empty the bucket. And the rocks just can't get out fast enough. And here perhaps is the most impressive part of the model, and that is it makes the giant hand look even more giant. It's always nice to see a really big mining machine modelled, 
And this model is unusual because of its very small size. But it's a great model because there are no compromises and it looks great, even in 1 to 160 scale. And it also means that you don't really need much space to be able to display it. In terms of details and features, this model is excellent.